Melissa McCarthy might be in charge in her own inner circle, but do audiences in Hollywood respect her? You're watching Beyond the Trailer's review of The Boss. Our troop came in with the $189,000. Holy shit. I object to parolees attending our meetings. If you don't get off my back, I'm gonna shove a box of chocolate clusters up that tight ass of yours. What is all this? This is my way back. We are gonna start a brownie empire and teach these girls real business skills. We want some good recruits. Get in there, go for the aggressive girls. I feel kind of sweaty and scared. It's just the coffee kicking in. Oh, you know what? Oh, I may have switched them. I put a little splash of bourbon in mine. Paul Feig, husband and creative partner Ben Falcone, Universal and Fox. They all respect Melissa McCarthy because she's made them a lot of money. In fact, McCarthy is one of the few female comedians working today, if not the only one, to have broken free of Judd Apatow and become her own standalone brand. Sure, she consistently makes movies with Paul Feig, but she also consistently makes movies without him. She is as hardcore behind the camera as she is in front of it, and with the exception of Tammy, she's produced impressive results. In fact, she's just coming off of her biggest standalone hit, Feig Spy, which made over $235 million worldwide with just a $65 million budget. The Boss was supposed to keep that momentum going, a film which brilliantly updates Troop Beverly Hills without having to pay the creators of Troop Beverly Hills any money. And then, with the one-two punch of Spy and The Boss, McCarthy would then deliver the knockout blow with Ghostbusters. Ah, Ghostbusters. Surely McCarthy and Universal wish that Sony would have waited to debut that film's trailer until after the boss hit theaters. But that's not how things went down. Instead, Sony debuted the trailer on March 3rd, with Feig paying a visit to the Ellen DeGeneres show with the unfortunate headline of Girls vs. Ghouls. The internet collectively threw up, with so much hate spewed not only towards the reboot but the cast, that Sony started deleting YouTube comments on the trailer, of course, to no avail. Now, McCarthy's relationship with movie audiences doesn't seem so solid, and husband Falcone, who directed her one-flop Tammy, is perhaps not the best person to try and mend that relationship. Then on top of all that, Chris Rock just did a Girl Scout cookie gag at the Oscars, where McCarthy was noticeably absent. Although, considering how the gag bombed, perhaps that was for the best. So will the boss become collateral damage to all the undeserved misogynistic internet hate for Ghostbusters? Or will it only offer proof that maybe the haters are right about McCarthy? So with a 19%, 19% on Rotten Tomatoes and painful memories of having to sit through Tammy, so painful, I was actually a little afraid to go and see this movie. But you know what? It's not horrible. It's not great either, but the way I would describe it is that it's got an hour of really stellar material, but it's unfortunately padded to an hour and 40 with really raunchy, not that funny, extra material. Yes, this is a very raunchy movie. It is rated R for a reason, and even though there are kids in it, you should not take any kids to see it. That said, I really like what the movie actually had to say about the Girl Scouts and how perhaps the organization could be modernized a bit uh, considering what it's like for women today. I also thought there was a lot of humor in the movie that was really spot on when it comes to women. And not just that it was funny, but that it was uh, making uh, jokes about certain things that I think all women can relate to that's rarely, up until this point, been really discussed, you know, like out in the open, I guess you could say. And that's an interesting aspect to more women being in comedy. I also thought that there were some women, some types of women portrayed here that were also spot on, but are rarely seen in entertainment. And I'm sure everyone watching the movie will recognize a few of those types. Uh, now, Melissa McCarthy, while this isn't her best material, uh, she's a comedy superstar. I mean, she really commands uh, your attention when she's on screen, and she not only does a great job with the good material, but she powers through the not-so-good material. Also, she handles the emotional scenes in the movie very well. I would say that there is a point in the film where her character became very unlikable. Understandably so, and it worked with her character arc, 
But it's unusual in a comedy, a light comedy, to see something, I think, to some degree, get very dark. Now, the other standout cast members, interestingly enough, are some of the kid actors. And I want to make sure I get their, their uh, names right here. Uh, one is Ella Anderson as Kristen uh, Bell's daughter, Rachel. And then the other is Eva Peterson as Crystal Del Vecchio. She was very, very funny. Unexpectedly so. Now, as for the rest of the cast, they were fine, but I honestly think the movie would have been a little bit better, perhaps with a better supporting cast. And I'm even including Peter Dinklage there, unfortunately, because while I've seen him be very funny in the past, and he's very game here, I just don't think this role was a good match for him. And I would actually like to see more of Michelle Darnell. I like the idea of a comedy about a woman in the business world. I think it's uh, something you don't see. Uh, and, you know, it's like, I'd say maybe Murphy Brown is the closest example to that, uh, but it was really cool to see. And I think that uh, I liked a lot of what Melissa McCarthy had to say, both comedically and I think in terms of like, I don't know, editorially. I thought that was really neat. But if she does this character again, which again, I'd like to see, I hope she has again, a better supporting cast and also some stronger people behind the camera. Sorry, Ben Falcone. I mean, I would say after this and Tammy, I'm glad she has such a wonderful husband who she met through her work at the Groundlings, uh, but I, I don't know if they should continue to work together anymore. I think he's bringing down her game. Because, like, this was good, but it's not as good as Spy, and I don't think this is really what she wants to come right before Ghostbusters. As for whether or not you should see this movie right now, uh, I would say, yeah, I think it's worth seeing, particularly if you're a woman. I mean, uh, movies really should kind of be, you know, for the widest audience possible, especially a commercial movie like this. But I do think that some women are going to find some of the jokes a little bit funnier than guys would. Uh, but I think it's worth watching, uh, not necessarily for full price in a movie theater, but maybe for a matinee or you could stream it later on. I could see this movie doing very well in the ancillary market because... Uh, it's just mildly offensive. But hey, this is the kiddie pool when it comes to raunchy comedy. I saw trailers in front of this movie for, uh, um, uh, the, the uh, I forget, Mike and so-and-so need wedding dates. Uh, it looks really funny with Zac Efron and uh, the guy from Modern Family, uh, blanking on his name, but also uh, fantastic uh, female comedians, Anna Kendrick and... Uh, um, uh, oh, I'm, oh my, I feel so bad. Uh, and then also, uh, it's very late. <laughs> Uh, and then also um, Neighbors 2, super raunchy, like, it was, like this was nothing, this was a toe in the water compared to those. So I guess this is warming us up for what's going to be a pretty dirty summer. I hope those movies are funnier though, uh, as well as raunchy. Alright, so that's my review of Michelle Darnell. I'd be very curious to hear your thoughts on the movie if you saw it. Uh, and again, uh, I think it is worth seeing, but I wouldn't be in a rush. Alright, thank you so much for tuning in, and you can check out some other episodes right now.